Let's go ahead and get started. So my name is Lucas Naboa. Um, I serve as the Director of Undergraduate Student Services here in the College of Nursing. Uh, here is my team uh, that we uh, have over here in various places. And when I say that, uh, we have a couple different programs that I'll share with you as well. So we have support on those different campuses. Um, Jessica, Donna, and Jacob are our three other academic advisors. They're actually here on our main campus in Orlando. Judy and Crystal are two of our admissions specialists. Judy's working with our pre-licensure programs and Crystal's working with our post-licensure programs. I'll share what the difference is between pre-licensure, meaning you are not an RN, and your post-licensure, meaning you do have an RN license. Patty works with our Seminole State Concurrent Program. She's actually at Seminole State at the Altamont Springs campus. And then our concurrent, or sorry, our traditional program has three locations. We're not only here in Orlando, but we're also out in Daytona and in Coco. So Teresa works with our cohort that starts in Coco, and then Christina works with our cohort that starts in Daytona. So we'll share a little bit more about that, but this is our undergraduate advising team. If you're looking to book an advising appointment, it's gonna be with the top row of individuals, and then obviously if you're gonna be attending an information session like you guys are, it's also gonna be with uh, either myself or, or most likely Donna on, on most days. We're gonna take a quick tour of our building we're not located directly on campus. We are just around the corner, a couple blocks away from main campus over in Research Parkway. If you've been over here, uh, you'll notice that it is very close to campus, but it is nice to have our own building where we have our own uh, lecture uh, rooms as well as our own lab spaces. And you can um, see some of this in the video, which I'll start right now. Welcome to the Simulation Technology Innovation and Modeling Center, the STEM Center. Join us for an evidence-based educational experience. As the Florida Hospital Endowed Chair in Healthcare Simulation, I invite you to come and explore the possibilities. Welcome to the Essential Skills Lab. Caring for the activities of daily living, as well as the practical and essential skills, can be demonstrated in our multi-bed unit. This unit serves as a space in which high fidelity as well as low fidelity simulations take place. We can also assign multiple patients to increase the realism of the acuity that our undergraduate students will encounter in the work environment. This intensive care environment is utilized by both graduate and undergraduate students. Acute care nurse practitioners practice advanced skills in this safe learning environment. The ventilator, pumps, and equipment are fully functional. We educate and produce great nurse practitioners. Knight's Nursery is the place where we provide pediatric care. We strive for an environment that takes care of multicultural and multi-generational patients. In this environment, we care for pediatric patients from the ages of zero to 18. They all have lung sounds, breath sounds, bowel sounds, chest rise and fall, and they blink. They can choose to interact with you or not. In health assessment, we use standardized patients to enhance graduate student learning experiences. We use different teaching technologies and methodologies to teach students how to assess and diagnose patients. Currently, we are working on performing histories and physicals related to a patient's chief complaint. Today, he has ear pain. This is Olivia Jones. She is a high fidelity human patient simulator. She has both lung sounds, heart sounds, and bowel sounds. She demonstrates fetal heart contractions on the monitor and can birth a baby. We use her for high-risk, low-volume simulations here at the undergraduate program in the College of Nursing. We certainly hope that you've enjoyed this tour of the STEM Center. See you later. Okay, so that is the video that should have been here. I'm just going to keep this screen open. Um, Case. We have other links, so in case some other links don't actually work, I can, uh, I can transition and find them on our website. So there's a couple different types of uh, nursing degrees, um, and there's a couple different types of institutions in which you could earn those different types of nursing degrees. So I wanted to start out by sharing the types of nursing education and the differences between the degrees, okay? So the first one is you do have your private nursing schools, right? Uh, those private nursing schools here in Orlando, you've probably heard of them and seen them on TV. Hertzing, Rasmussen, Kaiser, those schools offer ASN, some actually offer a BSN as well. 
UCF is a public institution here in the state of Florida. We have 12 public universities. We have 28 state college, public state colleges. Here in Central Florida, you're probably most familiar with Seminole State College, Valencia College, um, Eastern Florida State College, uh, but down south, Broward, Miami-Dade. Those are all state colleges that offer the ASN, and they too sometimes offer the BSN. So the ASN is completely different than an AA. An AA, you're essentially earning your general education program requirements, which are part of a bachelor's degree, right? A bachelor's degree is typically 120 credits. Well, the general education program makes up roughly 36 to 37 of those credits, right? An ASN, you're gonna be specifically studying nursing courses, right? They're 1,000 and 2,000 level nursing courses. They're associates of science degrees and they're usually offered at the state colleges or in some cases, community colleges. And, and this goes for throughout the United States as well. Here at UCF, we do not offer the ASN. We offer the BSN only, right? The Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. So students not only do either an AA at a state college and then come into our nursing program or if they complete the GEPs and then do the nursing program. And these are usually offered at your state universities, but they are becoming more common for uh, state colleges to offer them as well as for-profit or private institutions as well, just as the dem to really the demand is growing. So uh, institutions are beginning to offer these programs more readily. We also have an RN to BSN. So you can see there, there's an ASN and a BSN, which are pretty much degrees. So essentially they're, they're the curriculum, the degrees. But once you pass and graduate from uh, an ASN program or a BSN program, you can then, I'm gonna make sure this chat doesn't, it doesn't say that I can't hear you or anything. Hold on one second. Oh, hard to hear me. Okay, I'm, I'm, my volume is all the way up. So um, try your volume. And I'm gonna please mute yourself if you can. That way, everybody, and we'll save the chats for the end. Okay. I'm gonna, I don't know where to put that, but I'm gonna put it down there. Uh, the RN to BSN is for students who have an RN license, right? They go through an ASN program, they take the NCLEX, they become a registered nurse, and now they want to come back and do the, the, the curriculum to get the BSN, the Bachelor of Science in Nursing. We offer an RN to BSN program, and I'll share that in a little bit, uh, uh, how that program works. Okay, I mentioned the ASN and the BSN are just degrees. It's your, your curriculum. You cannot become a registered nurse until you pass the NCLEX. That is the national exam administered in individual states. So Florida has an, a, a Florida Board of Nursing. Uh, once you graduate and your degree is conferred, we send our graduates uh, the list of their names to the Florida Board of Nursing and they're given a test date to test for the NCLEX. Should they pass, they become a registered nurse. At that time, they can then apply for registered nurse positions, okay? You can see some of the pass rates compared to the nation as well as the state and then UCF. I've also included a link here that takes you to the Florida Board of Nursing's website where you can compare the different nursing programs and their pass rates for any given semester or year as well. And you can compare the national average as well, okay? If UCF isn't something that works out for you, you may wanna review that before you start a nursing program because essentially the curriculum that you learn in the ASN or BSN program is what's going to prepare you to pass the NCLEX. So you wanna make sure that the program that you're attending like UCF at 96.6% has a very high NCLEX pass rate. That speaks volumes as to the curriculum and the faculty members that are preparing students to take that national exam. The RN, again, is the license that students earn after passing the exam. So we are accredited, an accredited nursing program. You, again, you'll have to be wary when you're looking at nursing programs and their accreditation. UCF as a school is accredited through SACS, the Southern Association, but our nursing program is actually accredited through the, through the Commission on Collegiate Nursing Education, CCNE. That makes sure that your license can be transferable between states. If you're a non-Florida student or if you end up getting a job in another state or as a traveling nurse, you can be guaranteed that because you went to UCF and you graduated from a CCNE institution, that license is transferable, not only in the state of Florida, but to whatever state you're going to. The curriculum in a BSN program is general. It's not gonna specialize in anything. It's going to be very general because it's preparing you to take the NCLEX, which covers a general broad range of topics. Specialization can occur right after you graduate with your BSN. I always use my wife as an example. I'm not a nurse, I'm 
my degrees are in education, but she is. She has a BSN and she actually went on to get a master's as a family nurse practitioner. And she's a practicing nurse for Advent, a nurse practitioner for Advent Health. That specialization in family nurse practitioner was something that she got after the general BSN curriculum. There's various routes you can go. With, even within the nurse practitioner realm, there's various routes you can go. But the BSN will be very general. You won't focus on a specific population or a specific type of patient. You'll focus on everything because the NCLEX will focus on everything. Here are some quick facts, and this goes for UCF nursing, all right? So we have a couple different majors, all right? When you're applying to the institution, you wanna be very careful when you're selecting a major and have a clear understanding what that major is based on the type of student that you are. Okay, nursing pending. Everybody comes into our university if they're looking to do nursing as a, in a pending status. Nursing is a limited access program, so we wanna make sure that you meet those requirements before we admit you to one of our nursing programs. So when you're in that pending status, you're either working towards meeting those requirements or you're waiting to get verified that you have those requirements. So nursing pending is when you're applying for a pre-licensure program such as our second degree program, our traditional programs, or our concurrent programs. The RN nursing pending is for those students who are interested in going to the RN to BSN program. We'll talk about what the requirements are for each one of these, but this is when you're applying for one of our post licensure programs. The AS nurse pending, we have a new program that started just a couple years ago, the Florida College System Concurrent Program. I know I mentioned this earlier, ASM programs are typically offered at the state colleges. Well, if you're actually in one of the ASM programs at a state college and you're interested in getting the BSN, you don't necessarily have to wait to become an RN to do the RN to BSN. You can actually start taking BSN classes in your second semester of your ASN program. So if that's you, you would then be AS nurse pending. I did say this before earlier, nursing is a limited access program. It means you must apply and be accepted into the program you're interested in order to take the nursing courses. If you come in as nursing pending and try to take a nursing course, you will not be able to because we approve all major changes into the actual nursing program. When you were looking at this in the future, cumulative GPA is all undergraduate coursework taken at regionally accredited institutions. This includes dual enrollment in high school. If you took dual enrollment in high school, those courses were college courses, they're undergraduate courses, and they'll be used to calculate your undergraduate UCF GPA that is done by undergraduate admissions when you apply and are admitted. Our next slide is the application timelines. On the left-hand side, you can see the different programs. We'll start with our second degree program. Obviously second degree, meaning these students have a first degree in something other than nursing. This program starts once a year. Therefore, the application is once a year. Every January 1st through the 15th, students are applying for this program to begin every summer. This program is an accelerated program, so you'll hear that interchangeably, either accelerated or second degree, they're the same program. It's accelerated, meaning it's only four semesters. Four semesters is the shortest amount of time uh, one of our BSM programs. It's the shortest program we have. These students uh, begin every summer and they end the following summer. So if you follow me, it's summer, fall, spring, they're done at the end of the next summer. So it's a very quick program. We admit 72 students to that program every year and if you ask me, if you ask my opinion, I believe it's one of our most competitive programs. And I'll talk about admission statistics in a little bit. The next three programs that we have are all traditional. But again, we have our traditional program at three different campuses. Not only do we have it here in Orlando, but we also extended it to Daytona and Coco, meaning those programs are at Daytona and at Coco as well, okay? So that program also only starts once a semester, but that application is every February 1st through the 15th. That program's a little longer than second degree. It's five semesters, but it also ends in this, it also ends in it, all of our plans of study is what I'm trying to say. It's all of our plans of study are set in stone. So all the students begin as a cohort and they end as a cohort. So that program begins in fall, goes fall, spring, has one summer, and then fall, spring, and students graduate in that fifth semester. We take 126 students in Orlando, and we also take 45 students at Coco and 45 students at Daytona. You can apply one application on, on February 1st and list your preferences for all three campuses. Or you can apply for just Orlando, or you can apply for just Coco, or you can apply for Coco in Orlando, but you can submit one application and apply to all three campuses. 
if you're admitted to one, your application will obviously be canceled to the rest. If you're put on the wait list, you'll be pulled into the program and you can remain on the wait list for another program. The next two are our concurrent programs. We have two concurrent programs, one with Seminole State and one with Valencia. Valencia program, I'll start there because Seminole State's a little confusing right now because they're actually not having a fall application. So our Valencia application this fall, this begin fall 2020, that application was actually moved back to June 1st through the 15th. We've given students an extra amount of time to test for the T's and to submit transcripts because of university closures and testing site closures. That program is seven semesters. It begins in fall and spring, and we take 40 students. Seminole States usually starts every semester. It starts in summer, fall, and spring. However, Seminole State has decided not to admit for fall 2020, so we've had to cancel that application. So there will be no fall application for Seminole State, so the next application will be in August, and there is a, going to be an application for Valencia, but it's not gonna be the complete 40, it will only be 20. So June 1st through the 15th for fall Valencia, and then in August and September for spring 2021. The next program listed there is our Florida College System, or our AS to BS program. This program starts also every semester. They go off of the university admissions. You do submit um, a nursing application like you do with all the other programs listed above it, but this one is uh, you, more in line with the university admissions. So you'll notice that the deadline to apply for summer as a transfer student to UCF is March 1st. The deadline to apply as a transfer for fall is July 1st. And the deadline to apply for spring as a transfer is September 1st. So you'll apply to the university and then apply to the Florida College System Concurrent Program during those following 15 days. Again, you must have completed your first semester in that ASM program. And we admit all qualified applicants. This is an online program. So we're not worried about seats. We're not worried about clinical hours. So we can admit everybody who meets the minimum requirements. Same goes for the R and the BSM program. This is our only nursing program that doesn't have a separate nursing application. You're admitted to the university as in the RN nursing pending status, and we run a query based off your degree audit to admit students based on the term they wanna start. You must have submitted your RN license, and I'll talk about the other admission requirements, but like the Florida College System, all students who meet the minimum requirements are admitted. This is a fully online program. So here are the application requirements as promised. The second degree and traditional programs have a minimum, and this is just to consider your application. If you don't meet these minimum requirements, we will not consider your application. 3.0 cumulative GPA, again, considering all undergraduate coursework. A 78 on the T's, the test of essential academic skills, which I'll talk about in a little bit seven of the eight nursing prerequisites completed at the time of the application. I'll share with you the prerequisites as well. And you must be admitted to UCF for the term that the program is going to start. You'll notice that for traditional, for instance, the application is in February, which is in spring, but the program doesn't start till fall. So there are different things based on if you're a current UCF student or if you're applying for the first time to UCF, when you need to be admitted and how you need to be admitted. And then there's the clean background check. We have clinical requirements, we have clinical partners that have requirements, so students must, after being conditionally admitted, submit a clean background check as well as fingerprints and drug screening one week after they're admitted, otherwise we will rescind that offer. The RN to BSM program, that minimum GPA is 2.8, but you must have an RN license, you must have seven of the eight nursing prereqs completed, admitted to UCF by the deadlines that are listed there as well. Here are some of our admission statistics. We are, our summer 2020 second degree students just started classes, what are we on the, we're at the 19th, they started classes eight days ago, right? So uh, I'll probably have to run what their averages were, but they're gonna be very in line to what our last cohort was. This is our summer 19 cohort. This is the class that is graduating this summer 2020 now. Remember it's summer, fall, spring, summer. We had 304 applicants and we invited 72. You can see what their averages were for the four categories that we use on our admission rubric. We look at your overall GPA, your T-score, 
And then we take the four science and the four non-science GPA and use that to rank our individual students and pull the highest 72 and invite them to our program. You can also see the average ranges there. We did admit, you'll notice, that a student had an overall GPA of a 3.17 overall GPA. I always tell students in advising appointments, if you're strong in three of the four of these categories, you should consider yourself competitive. In this case, I don't know who the student was, but that 3.17 student probably had the 97.3 T score in the ranges and both a 4.0 and a 4.0 in the science and non-science. Since he was competitive in three of the four with a lower overall GPA, he was competitive or she was competitive and was admitted to the program. Here are traditional, again, up in the air, depending on who you're asking, traditional Orlando or second degree in terms of competitiveness. This is our fall 19 cohort. Our fall 2020 cohort, we're still working with right now because they have another whole summer. So we're still pulling students from the wait list and all of this stuff. So we'll calculate that in a little bit. But I imagine it would be very similar to fall 19's numbers. We had a total applicants of 584. And here in Orlando, we took 126. And you can see what their averages there are as well. So 3.75, the science, the non-science, as well as the T-score. We have all of these admission statistics posted on our website. We don't hide anything. So I always tell students, if you just Google UCF nursing admission statistics, it's the first PDF that pops up. I do a good job of uh, updating that PDF file every time we have a new cohort start. So students have the most accurate information and are able to gauge whether or not they're gonna be competitive in the program they want to begin. Our concurrent programs. These are a little bit more intensive in terms of uh, the admission to these programs. And I say that because they're not just solely UCF programs, where the traditional and the uh, secondary program, students just have to worry about UCF. If you're looking at the concurrent programs, you're looking at, if you're applying to both, three different institutions, right? You're applying to UCF, and then if you want to do Seminole State, you have to do stuff through Seminole State. If you're applying to Valencia, you have to do stuff through Valencia as well. There's actually, if you're a brand new student, four applications that you need to do. You need to be admitted to both institutions as a student, and then you need to apply to both nursing programs too. So what are the concurrent programs? We're essentially working with the ASN programs at those two state colleges, and from the beginning of that program, students are taking both ASN courses and BSN courses through UCF. These programs are offered in person at the state college, and students will take online BSN classes through UCF. This is seven semesters. Well, Seminole State is six semesters. Valencia is seven semesters. In their first five semesters, they'll be working towards the ASN and the BSN simultaneously. After the five semesters, they will graduate with the ASN, be eligible to sit for the NCLEX, become an RN, and their last one or two semesters, depending on which program, they'll be just taking BSN classes to graduate with a bachelor's degree from UCF. All of our nursing programs have the same end result, a bachelor's degree from UCF, a BSN from UCF. These programs, you just happen to earn the ASN simultaneously while working towards the BSN. I hope that makes sense and we can answer any questions later on. There are a, different, a couple different application requirements which make the admissions a little bit more murky than the traditional and the second degree where we're just worrying about UCF requirements. Because you're working through the ASN programs at Seminole State and Valencia, those programs have additional requirements on top of our requirements. So the GPA stay the same, minimum 3.0. The T-score stays the same. However, you'll notice the prerequisite courses have a couple additional requirements. For instance, for Seminole State, you must have the biology, the BSC 2010, which is general biology, as well as college algebra and an approved humanities. You must also have ENC 1101, which is composition one. And if you make sure that you have the right diet there or right human nutrition course. At UCF, we will accept HUN 2201 by itself. But Seminole State and Valencia want to make sure that students also have the additional diet therapy course. So you'll see in that, in that chart right there, if you took HUN 3011 or 2202, you're good for all applications. But if you took 1201 or 2201, 
you'll need to add on the additional one credit diet therapy if you're wanting to do the concurrent programs, All right? You also see the mandatory courses of general psychology and developmental psychology at Seminole State. And you'll see that only statistics can be the outstanding uh, prerequisite for Valencia. That means all of the other prerequisites, including the science prerequisites, need to be completed. And you'll notice at the very bottom, number three, you must have a 3.0 in those three science prerequisite courses. You must also have valid applications at UCF and the state college. You must be an active student for us to admit you. What we do is we sit down with the uh, individuals at Seminole State and the individuals at Valencia, and we say, student's good with us. And then we say, Seminole State says, the student's good with us. If Seminole State or Valencia say, mm -mm, they, they're missing this or they're missing that, then we cannot admit you either. And we cannot consider your application if they will not consider your application. You have to be admitted to both nursing programs to be eligible for this program. Here are the admission statistics for these two programs. I could probably update these actually to the spring 2020 numbers um, now, but they're very similar again to give you a rough estimate of how many students we're admitting, how many students are applying, and what the average GPAs are. Again, you can apply with a minimum 3.0, but all of our programs you'll see have well over a 3.0 for the average admitted student ranges, as well as the T's. The minimum T's to be considered is a 78, but you'll see the average T's for the Seminole State program was an 82, Valencia was an 83. The prereqs as well, they're well above a 3.0, even though you just need a C or higher for us to consider those prerequisites. Florida College System Concurrent Program is a little bit different too. All eight nursing prereqs need to be completed at the time of the application. All of our other programs, you can have one pending, right? And it needs to be completed before the beginning of the program. But for the Florida College System Concurrent Program, all eight need to be completed. And the GPA is a little bit higher than the R and a BSN. It's a 3.0 cumulative GPA, again, considering all undergraduate coursework. You must have completed that first ASN semester, and you can only have three or less outstanding courses from the general education program, the Gordon Rule, the State Corps, or foreign language. It's a completely online program like our R and a BSN, and it's also 30 credits. There's no T's required, and you get the online tuition, which is 179, compared to the face-to-face, -face, which is 212. You start taking those BSN courses as soon as your third semester. So you complete your first semester, you apply in your second semester, you begin taking BSN courses with your ASN courses, right? Because your ASN program is either four or five semesters, and you graduate much earlier than you would if you did the R and a BSN program. This is gaining some traction uh, as, a, as a program becomes more popular. As promised, here are our prerequisite courses. You'll see we have four science listed on the left, and we have four non-science or other prerequisite courses listed on your right. The courses in red are our preferred courses. We prefer that students take human anatomy and human physiology. Not all institutions offer them separately though, so we also accept AMP1 or AMP2. You'll see the microbiology, and a lot of students have questions about the fourth science or chemistry. Uh, some students say, I'm required to take Chem 1032. That's not necessarily the case. We tell students to take Chem 1032 here at UCF because it's a requirement to get into the microbiology course, and it's also a requirement to get into human physiology. But if you were able to take microbiology and human physiology without chemistry or a lower chemistry, then any course from those prefixes listed there will be accepted as the fourth science. The four non-science are pretty easy, general psychology, developmental psychology, human nutrition, and statistics. Again, our red courses, the courses in red are our preferred courses. For statistics, we have no preference, um, but the human nutrition on the non-science is the one that gets the most questions. We do have a petition process for students who are transferring in either out-of-state courses or courses from a private institution in Florida. All of the public state colleges and state universities in Florida use a common course numbering system. Therefore, if you took courses out of state or at a private institution in Florida, we don't have a common course number to match what the, co the course you took with a UCF course. Therefore, if you took any of the eight nursing prerequisite courses out of state 
or at an in-state private institution, you will need to petition those courses to the UCF College of Nursing. We meet as a, as a committee the second Tuesday of every month and we re and review petitions and let students know seven to 10 business days whether their petition was approved or denied. You can actually petition a course prior to taking it to ensure that that course is going to count before you spend the tuition dollars to actually take the course. The petition page can be found on our website. Again, the easiest thing to do is UCF College of Nursing petition. It's probably the first PDF that pulls up. It's a two page document. The first page has all the instructions and the second page has a, uh, the ability to insert all of your courses. When you do this and you send in your petition, you'll want to attach a course syllabus or a catalog description from the university detailing in the semester you took the course, what was covered in the course. Our faculty will review that course syllabus or the course description and ensure that your course that you're petitioning actually matches what the content is in the course that's offered at UCF. The TEAS exam, the test of essential academic skills. We offer it here in the University Testing Center. However, there's a different method of testing right now and we're only letting students who are applying to our, our, our upcoming application test. So if you're applying for uh, a program in the future, hold tight. Hopefully the University Testing Center will reopen. But if you visit the ATI website, which is listed there, you can actually see the different facilities and institutions that offer TEAS testing. So you don't necessarily have to test at UCF, but if you do, you're gonna avoid a $70 or $27 charge to send your scores to UCF. The University Testing Center sends us scores every Friday. There's a very strict retesting policy, and we've actually had to deny students because they didn't follow this. So you wanna make sure that you are under, aware of what the retesting policies are before you violate them and, are, and, and get a denied application uh, email from us. So you can take the test three times in a calendar year. That's three times in 2020, three times in 2021 if necessary. You must also wait at least 30 days. So you can test on the 31st day or retest on the 31st day. If you don't take it at the University Testing Center, you must submit official scores from ATI. It looks very similar to the College Board for SAT and ACT scores. You'll have an account, you can log on, and you can submit official scores to be sent to UCF. We need to have official scores on file showing that you took the test before the deadline for each one of our applications. There are various ways to prepare for the T's. Students always ask, what do you recommend? What book? What, what, how do you do it? I always say, go to Barnes & Noble, get an ATI testing tease book, and see if you can find one that has practice exams in it. Take a couple practice exams, see where your strengths are, see where your weaknesses are, and then really focus on the content in that book to prepare for the tease before you spend $90 taking the real thing. There's also a course offered at UCF through UCF Continuing Education. If you can just Google that as well. I'm afraid this link doesn't work, so I'm not gonna try it. But if you go through UCF Continuing Education, there's a prep course offered. It's $499 and that's without the books that come with it. But there's about 27 sessions that meet throughout the semester and you can find more details on the website. Background check. It's always important that I mention this prior to students applying to our program so that they're aware that they will be required to submit a clean background check as well as uh, drug screening prior to beginning any of our programs our pre-licensure programs at least, our programs that require clinical hours. We work with different clinical partners throughout Central Florida as well as on the coast, whether it's Health First out in Cocoa or Halifax in Daytona or Advent Health and, Ad and Orlando Health here in Orlando. All of our clinical partners have requirements for their actual nurses that they hire, right? You cannot be convicted of certain crimes or uh, be uh, found to have marijuana in a drug screening, right? Our students are doing clinical hours in those facilities. So we have to abide by the contracts established by those facilities and make sure that our students are clear to participate in clinical hours because clinical hours are actually part of the BSN curriculum. So after students are conditionally admitted, they'll have one week to get a background check, which is through fingerprints, through FDLE, it's a level two background check, as well as submit a drug test screen which screens, it's a 14 panel screening that works with uh, either, with, works with Castle Branch um, uh, to facilitate all of that and have everything clean before we can finally admit a student. 
Here's the application process. Foremost, you want to apply to UCF. You want to apply about three months prior to the nursing application deadline. So we covered what the deadlines were before. Take that deadline, go back three months. That's when you should be applying to university. You'll be required, depending on what kind of transfer you are and what kind of program you're pursuing, to obviously submit all previous college transcripts, maybe high school test scores, high school transcripts. Everything needs to go through undergraduate admissions. UCF's a large institution, so you want to give them about three months to review your application and make sure that you're an admitted student so when you apply to nursing, we can see that you're admitted to the university. Current students, you're not applying to the university, you're a current student. Former students, if you left the university, you're actually gonna do a readmission application and that's done through the registrar's office. New students apply through undergraduate admissions. Your degree audit is probably the most important part of your application. When I say that, it's because when you apply, all of your information is self-reported. You're self-reporting your GPA, you're self-reporting your T-score, you're self-reporting the grade you got in a microbiology course and where you took it. What we then do is validate or verify your application with your degree audit. You can view your degree audit if you're a current UCF student at any time. It's in your My UCF, there's a drop-down menu, it says My Night Audit on it. If you're applying, you'll be given a degree audit once UCF has all of your transcripts, all of your test scores, inputs it, and it populates onto your degree audit. You'll see that new applicants will not be able to view a degree audit until late February if you're applying for summer and fall, and then in October for spring. Why is your audit so important? Well, I referenced a couple things earlier, but it also calculates your cumulative GPA. The GPA we're going to review and matches what you put on your application. It's also gonna match your uh, prerequisite courses as well as the prerequisite GPA will be on there. And then transient courses. You wanna make sure that all of your college transcripts are in. If you're reviewing your degree audit and something says not satisfied and you know that you took that course transient two semesters ago, it's likely that undergraduate admissions doesn't have an updated transcript. And you'll wanna make sure that we get an updated transcript because if we don't see it on your degree audit, then we don't have record of you even passing it or taking the course. Here's a sample of what your degree audit will look like. Again, everybody comes in as nursing pending, so your plan description will be nursing pending. That will change to nursing BSN once you're admitted to one of the programs. You can see down below, if all of those um, banners are closed, then the, it's, it's met, all those requirements are met. But you can expand all and you can actually see you can actually see what's underneath them. So if I look under the banner of um, the pending requirements nursing BSN, you'll see that I have the, the science prerequisite courses. This student took AMP1, AMP2 at likely a, a state college here in Florida, and they transferred in to satisfy the anatomy and physiology requirement, like I said before. However, I can see that this student's missing biology, not satisfied. If you actually, if this student did take microbiology, then they need to update transcripts or they need to see what's they need to contact us to see if we can resolve that issue so that their microbiology is pushing through. You can also see on the right hand side where we're locating the actual overall GPA and all the courses that are going towards that GPA. If there's an incorrect grade or there's missing classes and that GPA is off, you need to either let us know or submit new transcripts. So applying to the College of Nursing. On our website, you'll actually see at the very bottom, it says apply now. You can actually apply to our BSN programs through that link. You'll complete a College of Nursing application for every program. If you're not admitted or you're waitlisted and you're not pulled from the waitlist, you'll need to submit a new application. It's not something that we have rollover applications in our waitlist stays. Once a program starts, the waitlist goes away. You should expect to spend about 30 to 45 minutes filling out the application. Not only are you trying to get personal information like your name, your email address, your phone number, but it's you want to make sure that you're matching up so that all of your grades are inputted correctly, your T-score is on there, everything is answered appropriately, and that we can have valid information when we're reviewing your application. If you're also applying to concurrent, remember that you must also submit a Seminole State or a Valencia during the application window at our partner college. You wanna make sure that you're submitting all material. For pre-licensure, obviously you don't have an RN license yet, so you would wanna make sure that we have your official T-score. You wanna make sure that we have all transcripts. 
and then you want to make sure that the background check is completed if you are conditionally admitted. For our post licensure programs, it's going to be important that you submit all transcripts so that we can verify your GPA and that you have the courses required and that we have an RN license on file. It takes us six to eight weeks to validate those applications. Again, for traditional Orlando, we had 584 applicants. It takes us six to eight weeks to review each application with a degree audit before we run a ranking system using our rubric to invite the first 126 students, if you're looking at traditional Orlando, to our program. We use the application email address that students input on their application to notify them of their status. That is, congratulations, you've been admitted, or congratulations, you've been placed on the wait list, or I'm sorry, you've been denied. Those programs, uh, those applications for each program take six to eight weeks to review. We do have a wait list for our programs, so obviously not our RN to BSN or our Florida College System because all students are either admitted or they're missing something. Um, but our other programs, we do have a wait list. Once that wait list, uh, once that program starts, the wait list goes away. It's very important and we're dealing with it right now with our fall 2020 students. Our wait list is active right now because it's, it's farther out than two weeks before the fall program begins. So our program, uh, our traditional students can still be pulled off the wait list. We say two weeks because remember the conditional admission involves a background check and fingerprints. So we want to make sure that if we pull a student from a wait list, they'll have two weeks prior to the program beginning to have a clean background check and, and drug screening. Provisional acceptance also requires a fitness to practice exam. You must have active health insurance. You must have a CPR certification done through the American Heart Association. And again, I mentioned that 14 panel drug screening as well. Final admission requirements are obviously, you must complete all those pending requirements. You can apply with seven of eight nursing prereqs, but that eight prereq must be completed prior to the program beginning. You must also complete your foreign language, as well as any other GEP courses that are outstanding. For, Florida, for the Florida College System Program and the R and BSN, remember you can, start with, you can start the program with three outstanding uh, GEP courses, but those three outstanding GEP courses must be completed prior to you taking 4,000 level courses, which is usually in about your second semester. So you wanna get those done quickly. You must have an active RN license and you must complete all eight nursing prereqs. All eight must be completed by the time of the application for the Florida College System, but you have to complete all eight prior to beginning the RN to BSM program. I mentioned how to petition nursing courses. Here's how you petition non-nursing courses, such as GEP courses. If any GEP courses were taken, again, out of state or at a private college, you must submit a transfer credit request through academic services. You must be an admitted student to do this. I'm hoping this link works across. Okay, this link doesn't. Oh, maybe I can copy and paste it. There we go. So at the very bottom of this page, you'll see the start evaluation. You'll enter your NID and PID to then petition a course. You'll also need to submit what you would for the nursing petition courses. You'll need to submit a syllabus or a course catalog from the institution and the year you took the course. That'll then be routed to the department on campus that teaches that course. If it's an English course, it'll go to the Department of English. If it's a biology course, it'll go to the Department of Biology. Nursing program factors to consider. Transportation. This goes for our pre-licensure program, not our RN to BSN or our online, but transportation. You're gonna be traveling to clinical places, you're gonna be traveling to different sites in the community. So you wanna have reliable transportation, not only to get to campus for courses and labs, but also to eventual clinical sites. You must use your uh, UCF Knight's email address. All university communication goes through your Knight's email address. We won't use your Gmail or your iCloud or your Yahoo account will use your official Knight's email address that you'll create once you're an admitted student. There's a very strict dress code, not so much in the lectures and labs where you must just dress appropriately, but in labs and clinicals, or sorry, in lectures, but in labs and clinicals, uniforms or scrubs, UCF scrubs, or if you're out of Seminole State and concurrent, you wear the Seminole State scrubs or the Valencia scrubs, must be worn in the clinical sites. Remember, if you're doing the concurrent programs, you're doing clinicals through those two state colleges. If you're in the traditional or second degree, you're doing clinicals through UCF. Okay, there's a ton of stuff that's covered in the eventual orientations regarding the dress code. So I'll just mention this very uh, briefly, but tattoos, piercings, um, fingernails, uh, things like that of nature, 
there's certain procedures and policies that must be followed, which will be shared not only in the clinical handbook, but in orientation once admitted to one of our programs. Social networking, HIPAA is a big thing, posting, sharing, communicating, anything related to nursing uh, or a patient via emails, blogs, Facebook is strictly prohibited and it could uh, warrant dismissal from the program actually. So a snapshot of a life of a nursing student. Demanding course curriculum. You can expect, depending on which program you're in, between 13 to 19 credit hours each semester of the program. You can approximate about 50 to 60 hours devoted to labs, lectures, clinicals, transportation, getting ready, study time, and that's not even considering eating, showering, napping, uh, personal life, 50 to 60 hours a week. It's a daytime program. A lot of students ask if we do nights or weekends. All of our programs, except for obviously the online R and the BSM programs and the Florida College System, are Monday through Friday, eight to five. We highly recommend that students do not work during these programs just because of the demanding schedule. But again, we cannot completely say it's disallowed because there are financial reasons that students have to work. But it's going to be very challenging to maintain a, even a part-time job and also uh, 50 to 60 hours a week dedicated to nursing. We have service learning as well as clinicals. So service learning starts in your first semester of the, uh, the BSM program. These service learning opportunities will be at YMCA, for instance, or a Boys and Girls Club. They'll eventually transition into clinical experiences at two of our partner locations here in Orlando, for instance, Orlando and Advent Health. You'll have varying types of experiences in not only pediatrics, maternal, but also long-term mental health and adult care. Again, these experiences are very broad because it not only helps in the curriculum, but it'll eventually help in passing the NCLEX exam. Here are the estimated costs. These are the exact same. So literally, I'm probably just gonna go into this PowerPoint and write 2021. These are the exact same, nothing's changed. In fact, UCF tuition hasn't changed in about seven years. So it still is 212.28 per credit at UCF. So if you're looking at our traditional program that has 65 credits in the nursing, uh, of nursing curriculum, you can do 65 times 212.28. If you're uh, in our, looking at our RN to BSM program, Remember the online tuition is 179 and those programs are 30 credits. So the tuition would be 30 times 179. One time application fee, this, is very, this varies a lot because remember you can go from buying a book at Barnes and Noble for a couple bucks to spending $499 on a T's prep course. So a 250 is just an estimate depending on how much time and energy and money you wanna spend in the T's exam. Um, but the background check is mandatory. $475 upon admission, which includes a drug screening, a CPR certification, all your various clinical equipments, you get an entire bag full of it, uniforms and ID badges. LeapRN is a one-time subscription. It's a database that all of our students must have. We use it not only to upload uh, plans of study for our students, but they can also upload their clinical hours and do student evaluations. And it's a lifetime subscription. It's $150. We estimate $850 for clinical lab fees as well as $2,500 for books. Not to worry though, we do have scholarships available for our nursing students. If you're admitted to one of our nursing programs, you are eligible uh, as a nursing student. And in the final semesters, if you're with the concurrent programs in Seminole State and Valencia, you have to wait until you, the last either semester or the last two semesters until you're just a UCF student because all your financial aid will go to the state college in the first five semesters while you're in the ASM program. But for traditional and second degree, as a UCF student, you're eligible to, uh, we have $235,000 available every year for UCF stu nursing students, and they can apply um, through the um, K, um, A2O website, I'm saying K2O, A2O, the Access to Opportunities website portal. If you're a nursing, if you're a nursing pending student, you can also use the A2O website to apply for various scholarships offered through UCF. We have various student experiences. We have the first one is for nursing pending students, particularly those who are gonna be on UCF campus, the main campus. The Association of Pre-Nursing Students was actually founded through the Office of Student Involvement on UCF's campus. They have a Facebook page. I'm a member of it. It's a great way for students to ask questions of one another, to sell books, to sell scrubs, to ask questions, and just a community, right? Um, you, it's also a, a, a registered uh, group on campus, so they hold meetings and they have a small um, membership fee as well. 
Once students are admitted to one of our, our nursing programs, SNA is the Student Nurses Association. It's a national organization, and we actually have chapters out in Cocoa and Daytona and here on, on main campus as well. They do a national convention every year, so different institutions have their SNA uh, leaders go to these national conventions where they can meet students in nursing programs throughout the country. Simulations for Life is our simulations club, and Sigma is the honor society for admitted students who have a certain GPA and join the International Honor Society for Nursing. There's also academic opportunities. The CNCs are community nursing coalitions. You'll gain valuable experience within the service learning in one of our 17 CNC locations, which are scattered throughout uh, Central Florida. And there's the Honors University's thesis program. You can do honors in the major and actually graduate with honors in the major by and work independent, do independent research with one of our faculty members. Nursing at Nike is for incoming freshman students who are starting in fall. Nike is one of the dormitories on campus and nursing includes taking one of our uh, nursing courses, actually it's called NSP 1800. It's a lower level nursing course taught by one of our faculty members called Nursing in the Profession. It prepares students not only working with other nursing students in that learning environment, but you have on-campus housing and community involvement engagement and working with a faculty member throughout your first semester here at college. There's global nursing as well. They take medical trips to Peru as well as Mexico, and this is done with our faculty member and students have the opportunity to study abroad a semester. And then Valor, the Veterans Affairs Learning Opportunity Resident Program that's out in Lake Nona. So what can you do now? You attended the information session. We had a couple hip hiccups in the beginning uh, trying to find that video, but your first step is complete. You've attended an information session. That's, that's really more than a lot of students do before they start sending emails. So, so uh, accolades to you. Um, the information session PowerPoints are also available on our website as well. If you have in-depth questions or want us to look specifically at transcripts or talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, we're doing all of our advising appointments through Zoom. I actually snuck into my office today um, because I have a pregnant wife and, and two miniature dash hounds at home um, and I really wanted to focus. So I'm actually here in my office, but we're working remotely until, until told otherwise. The website to book is actually here. Of course, that doesn't work either. I'm gonna go to that website where you can actually book an advising appointment to meet with one of the four individuals I shared with you on one of the first slides. So again, all appointments are through Zoom. Once you schedule an appointment with one of us, you'll be prompted uh, to input what the session's about. Looks like I have some availability later this week for 30 minutes. We'll send you a Zoom, a Zoom invite to meet via Zoom, just like this. We can, you can turn your video on, I'll turn, keep my video on, we can talk and we can look over things. And you'll want to email us transcripts if you're not a UCF student. If you're a UCF student, we can pull everything up. Um, again, if you're a new student, start looking at when you need to apply through undergraduate admissions. And then make sure you're reviewing the application criteria. Remember, it changes a little bit depending on the program, so you wanna make sure that you have a clear understanding what's required of you and what you need to submit. And then also look at the admission statistics. Am I competitive in this program? Should I look at another program? Um, you can see all of that stuff on our website. Getting connected. This is a great way. I've, I'm on Instagram for UCF Nursing, and I saw last night that our marketing coordinator actually posted about this information session. Um, we post a lot of information that's very vital to uh, students getting the information that they need in a timely fashion. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, even LinkedIn. Uh, join us on one of those. Um, follow us to stay up to date with not only what the faculty are doing, but what the staff uh, in the advising world is doing to help students, especially in this time. And then here's our main office number. Uh, again, if you call it, uh, nope, there's nobody out there. Um, and then our email address, ucfnurse at ucf.edu, and our website, uh, nursing.ucf.edu. Uh, 